everyone. Um, I've just seen that um, um, the original host is, uh, has internet problems, so I'm uh, taking over. Um, I saw that someone already had hit the recording button, which is great to see. Um, so at first, I am going to share the link to the document for this meeting into the chat. Um, please, everyone, um, write down your attendance in the uh, minute, please. I'm going to do this also. So, welcome everyone to the Cuba Community Meeting on the 23rd of February, 2022. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all and ask whether someone is attending this meeting the first time and would like to introduce himself. Okay, so I guess no new folks here. I don't see anything in the agenda and in the notes. I'll just uh, wait a couple of minutes. Maybe people will still trickle in and fill something in. Just feel free. I'll wait two minutes. Hi, everyone. Uh, hey. Are you listening to me? Yeah, we are. We can hear you. Yeah, I just wanted to say hi because it's the first time I'm, I'm attending to this meeting. My name is Alvaro. I just recently joined to the Qbird uh, storage team. And just wanted to say hi. Welcome, yeah, Alvaro. Hi, great to have you here. Thank you. Okay, um, since we don't have any agenda and notes items, I think we can just move on directly to the open floor. So first item is this CI outage that Roman wants to point out, I guess. Yeah, you've probably noticed it, that we had an outage which started yesterday about 8.40 UTC time and went on until uh, six UTC, so almost a whole working day for many of us. Um, Turns out that it was sadly outside of, or depends on how you see it. We didn't have an issue in our platform, but there seems to have been a DNS outage or network outage in parts of the US yesterday. That's what we got back from GitHub after we had an issue with them. Yeah, we couldn't do much more there. Yeah, and if you have some weird looking PRs where you see some labels missing or something that's probably related to this, just closing, opening the PR, for instance, should do that or just commenting something there. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think the next one is also you. <laughs> this is the sandbox <laughs> incubation. Yeah, so um we we didn't get yet an official press release from cncf but qbird passed the incubation process we are now out of sandbooks and in incubation mode would have probably been even something for the agenda <laughs> but oh yeah no big fuss yet about it there will be a, an official announcement but it's just nice to see so i guess uh, we are going to probably uh forward this to the qbird dev so that everyone is aware of this this right somehow Pardon, I, 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 you're a little bit not so loud for me, and I have some, I have some kids nearby. So I just I lost my <laughs> sound here. One second. No, no, it's my good phone. enough. It's just my surroundings. Ah, sorry, it's just my surrounding. Don't have to. I don't know why, but my audio let me down. So. Can you hear I me? I still hope that. Uh, I can hear you, yes? Yeah, perfect. Now, it, it, as I said, it's it's good enough. It was just my surrounding. I'm sorry for the confusion. 
Ah, okay, okay. No, no. By the way, my audio was also um, okay. having trouble, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I was just asking whether we. I guess that we are announcing this at Qubit Dev itself, right? So somehow that everyone knows that we are now in incubation and so on. I'm not sure. How yeah, that. there are some a press release from CNCF is prepared. Some blog posts I've heard also from them, and then we will announce it also more prominent. <laughs> but okay. since I'm so excited, I wanted to share it already. And it's anyway, official and nothing hidden. <laughs> great, great to hear that. So I am putting my volume a little bit up. Is it better now? It's good. OK, great. Hopefully. Uh, I don't know why Zoom is playing tricks on me, but yeah. Um, OK, so another heads up is from me. Um, we have uh, been looking at updating the SRI V nodes, which we have in our CI cluster. And as far as the plan is, we are going to update them on Friday. So we're doing this one by one. So we don't expect any complete outage for the SRI V jobs, but at least a little bit more um, uh, a bit of queuing up some jobs, I guess. So just so everyone is aware, uh, if on Friday there is uh, the, the SRIV jobs are on, on one PR or something, they, are, they might be piling up. Thank you, Daniel, for promoting this. Oh, it's fine. It was not only me. Thank you. <laughs> um, OK, so um, I am just asking once again, maybe someone else has anything to talk about in the open floor that he didn't get yet the, um, the opportunity to put into the open floor. Okay, so I think then we can right away um, move to the next section, which is the pull requests that need attention. So I think Shelley has put something up here if you want to start um, explaining what this is all about. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, thanks. Great. Um, so, um, I started working for my next epic for uh, for eleven, starting the design. So I wrote a design proposal and I posted it in uh, Kubernetes community. So I wanted to, it to get some attention, to get some comments, maybe suggestions, improvements. And that's it. Okay, great. Any takers here? I a little bit, but. In the, in the proposal, oh, I already looked at it, so I, I know, but maybe other people want to know. What? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. now we can hear you here. I was just asking if you could sort of outline what's in the proposal. Uh, yes, the, so the proposal is talking about um, doing a uh, VM memory snapshots or memory dumps. Um, currently, the purpose is for analyzing purposes. Uh, we're thinking of the future of uh, using it uh, for hibernations or snapshot and going back to restoring back to the same memory. Um, so the the basic design is um, attaching um, a PDC to the virt launcher, which it doesn't have a disk, so it doesn't need to be attached to the VMI, only to the virt launcher. So we need to add an, an, um, some adjustments in that part. And after this attachment, um, you can, the proposal says that you could either um, do a virtual command um, that will do a simple uh, memory dump to that uh, PDC and then you can decide uh, what to do with it, or either um, um, add some parameter to the uh, snapshot YAML that will uh, trigger this uh, memory dump before taking the uh, volume snapshots. So that's really the basic of the, the proposal. 
Cool. Thank you. So, you know, if people have uh, comments or whatever, please, uh, please do them on the yeah. PM. Yeah, I would love some uh, comments or anything, we'll definitely, any comments. Yeah. We'll definitely also have a look. Great to see it. Thanks. I'm looking at it right now. I'm curious, and I haven't read the whole thing, so sorry if this was covered. How would we restore this? So currently, um, it will be a part of, of the VM snapshot, um, but we won't currently restore the actual memory. Um, in the future, it you can you will probably have a hibernation, which will um, do this um, dump and then shut down the VM and restore the VM from that memory. But it's not something I yet uh, investigated uh, so deep. And for the restore, the same. The, there should be an option to use this uh, file to uh, restore the, the memory from it, but it's not part of the design currently. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. So what would be the um, user story? I see somebody would want to, ins in want to inspect the disk yeah. in memory, but how, how could they do that? So uh, the, this, this output file should be we should be able to use it with different um, um, uh, debugging um, um, options. There's like volatile volatility. I think that um, I should be able to to use it, and maybe JDB. Um, but David, it will be it will be exported. So there's also another. Um... Yeah, right. Design in the community for exporting volumes from from virtual machines, and this will be one of the um, you know you could export it through that mechanism to your um, to your laptop and and open it with GDB. I get it. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. What would be the technical mechanics for? Well, are we? Um, is the future to? Uh, for this to be like a investigation or, or like an introspecting a uh, guest sort of feature, like take a snapshot of the memory, introspect whatever was going on, or is the future also that we want to be able to like, snapshot a virtual machine live and then restore it? Like I'm just trying to understand where the future of this is going. Like the design, I, I just briefly looked at it. It makes sense as far as what we're doing, the mechanics behind how we do it. I'm just trying to understand um, how users would interact with this feature in the future. Yeah, so, so as Michael uh, commented that it should be a part of uh, an option to also export um, a VM, including the memory, um, or hibernate, which is only doing the memory snapshot, shut down the VM and continue from that memory, or um, doing an online snapshot and continue running and possibly returning to the same point with the disks and the uh, memory. Yeah, I mean, part of the, uh, at least with the snapshot and restore stuff, is we don't, when VMs are restored now, they're powered off. So we'd have to, um, you know, change some of the restore mechanics to, um, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, an actual first step there would be to, support um, snapshotting VMIs and restoring VMIs maybe, and then we can add memory support to that. So I think my comment here would be that it's fine to approach this in phases, like just do the snapshot first and then we can export it, whatever. I'd like to see it kind of fleshed out um, where, where this is going uh, with multiple like implementation phases, even if it's just a rough understanding at, at this point, just so we can, um, have like a like a a roadmap for this feature. And so you think this sh this should be added to the this design proposal, or is it something different that you think should be mentioned somewhere? I think so. I think that uh, a design proposal it would be nice to have both the snapshot and the restore or wh whatever that means, just so we can kind of have that discussion in case it 
for some reason influences how the snapshot is performed. I don't think it will, but at least we could have that discussion kind of up front. And I, I'll make a comment on the um, on the community uh, PR here about what I would be okay. interested in seeing. I don't think it influences uh, your initial implementation phase, though. So it looks good. Yeah. Picking that up, what what I, what I also always love to see on proposals is really end-to-end -end thoughts, not not as David said, not uh, technically, but from how users are using it. Like just imagining that, that that everyone can see that behind the proposal, there were thoughts put into the full flow on how people are getting this at the end and how you would envision it, how easy it should be for users to get something out. Yeah, so there's the way of, of getting this um, memory down, but there is not um, explanation of uh, how will you use it currently. So I, I'm not sure if it's part of the actual design or the use cases, like the, um, the possibilities of using the end result of the design. Okay, great. Overall, yeah, excited to, to have this. Black, were you talking or? Is, yeah. I could barely hear you. Uh, is, it, is it better? Yeah, it is better. Uh, I'm saying that um, this would be interesting in the context of uh, collecting um, memory dumps um, when, um, when panic occurs. And we have this uh, PV panic that we could use and then this uh, PV panic send events that we could, um, I guess, listen to, and then and then we would have a place to to store those dumps when something like this happens, and then export it. I mean, f for me, it sounds really like a interesting path forward. Yeah, we should definitely capture that use case. We've talked about that in the past, and, and this mm -hmm. actually gives us a path forward for it. Good observation. I had a question for you, Shelly. I heard you say um, export was kind of one of the use cases. So, so one way to look at this is, is if it's kind of like offline virtual machine migration, kind of a similar path to that. Maybe Michael can answer that. Yeah, the, I mean, we're definitely thinking about, uh, we're, we're building this export mechanism to do, uh, um, you know, kind of off, uh, with offline migration, moving the VM to another cluster is one of the use cases. Um, I'm not sure that this, again, until we have um, the ability to um, restore from, from the memory dump or, or um, start with it. I think it's going to be more of a just um, for offline debugging purposes at this point. But yeah, eventually they will be part of that migration. Cool. Okay. I'll have a look. Thanks. Okay. So I think this. Uh, settled, so we can probably go to the next thing, which will be the mailing list review. So I'm going to prepare a window so that we can get over this. I hope you can just share the screen. Sorry, ignore the noise from outside. I've got a couple of kids playing around here. Here. I hope everyone can see this now. I don't get any feedback, so um, can yes, we can see, see it. One? Okay, it's good. good. Your audio <laughs> is good too. We don't hear, or I don't hear the noise. So it's good isolation. Okay. <laughs> That's great to hear. Thanks, David. Okay. So um, I think uh, the CI outage got already handled. We have the meeting was troubles. Uh, with was sent by Catherine. So I think this one is also 
handled already. There is discussion going on on the SSH failure. Um, this one also. So I'm not sure I don't see anything that we probably have unhandled here. Ah, yeah. What I see, uh, I just forgot to to have um, to have this updated in the miscellaneous stuff or in the open floor. Uh, we are over the weekend somehow there must have been some update in the Quay or probably or the Quay IO because suddenly the unknown blob issue has magically disappeared. So, which is great to see, but uh, yeah, it would still have been interesting what the uh, what you what the problem would have been. So just a heads up for everyone, if things still do not work, please please get back to me. So um, I'll tr still try to take a look, but I think that this is fixed now. This, um, they did maintenance, um, or maybe they're doing maintenance. I can't remember if it was this Sunday or next Sunday, uh, and it was gonna be um, something that they were transitioning the back end. So maybe it resolved it, if that's mm -hmm. whatever they were doing. Yeah, can, can be because I think this thing uh, suddenly appeared a couple of weeks ago when they did another maintenance and then now it suddenly disappeared again. So yeah, may, I guess they fixed something with, with their maintenance, which is great to see. So um, yeah, but still, um, if anyone still needs this uh, workaround somehow, at least uh, I can just say from experience that Docker push can be well replaced with Scopio copy. But yeah, that, that's just as a side note. Okay, so let's have a look at the rest. Okay, I think this is until last week, meeting canceled, Qubit release. Okay, meeting notes. Okay, I don't see anything that we should somehow need to address here. Okay, so then can I can I can I raise something? Uh, there, there was that that uh, discussion about the SSH, I think. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure if this is the case or not. But uh, from a small discussion in uh, the network team, so we we figure out that I mean it's a it's a wild guess now. It's not. 100% confirmed, but it looks like if you we have this com this command that restarts a VM, right? It's done on a VM uh, object, and and that command is, if I'm not mistaken, it, it deletes the VMI and, and uh, it creates another VMI, right? Am I correct here? I don't exactly. I, are you uh, referring to this SSH email that uh, um, that that I'm just yeah. saying? Yeah, that SSH email is just saying that uh, that SSH email is just saying that after a reboot, they uh, the IP address is not returned because and and they and they found out that it's because the MAC address changed. So I'm asking, we think that the problem is that the way that the restart command the, that is done on a, on a VM, I mean, because we are, we, are, we are doing the restart by deleting the VMI uh, and then letting the, I guess the VM create another VMI instead. If this is correct, then is this correct um, or not? This is my question. Well, there's two different types of restart or reboot. There, there's a, the terms I think we've landed on for Qvert, and I don't know if this is consistent across the industry. Uh, a restart for us means we're going to cycle the pod. So there's gonna be a new pod, and unfortunately there's a new IP address. We can um, keep that MAC address stable if we need to, I believe, uh, but maybe, yeah, I believe, I believe we can. But uh, there's also a command called reboot. And I think we have it implemented now, which does like a soft reboot within that pod of the guest. And it's just going to actually cycle the guest within that same pod. Uh, and that's a separate command. Uh, 
Um, let me see if we actually have implemented it. Is it something we've talked about for years? Yeah, this is something I think it's called actually called. Yeah, so, so, so this is like your uh, confirming our suspicion or what we suspect here. And I think there is a problem then. We have uh, like, uh, I guess, I think it's a systematic problem. I think a restart usually on a domain does is not supposed to change the configuration of the domain. It's like, at, at least from from other system that I, I know. So it's like, I'm doing a hard rest, uh, restart, as you say, but the, the domain configuration is not supposed to change. And the problem here is that uh, for uh, what happened, we use LiveVirt, right, under the hood. So LiveVirt will auto-generate the MAC address and probably also PCI addresses in the guest. And if, you, if we don't use the same domain, again, it will, it will change them on, on, uh, on the new instance. And that's, it's not expecting, I mean, the user will not expect that. So they will expect the same the thing is, hardware, actually. Whenever VM goes down, that yeah. can be a restart this way or any other shutdown, it will change anyway. I uh, understand what you try to get at, but this is a limitation which we have right now. We can probably talk about persistent MAC addresses. And this is an issue, I'm surprised that it works on Fedora actually. Because from my experience, it does also not work on Fedora once, net, once you configure Network Manager. Because Network Manager should also, or some parts also overthink that a device is different if the MAC address changes. I, know, it, so, I think that the reason, the reason on, 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 that, on some operation system, it may not see this problem is because on other operation system, maybe the DHCP client is using a DUID or any other key, not the MAC address. So like the MAC address does not affect the, the cached IP or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's very common to have setups that it's bound to the MAC address and uh, that the config yeah. think is, thinks it's a different interface when the MAC address changes. Um, yeah. So what I wanted to say, I understand what you want to get at with the restart, but I don't think that the restart is such the problem. It's like, it's in general that we don't keep any MAC addresses um, if, if we could do that, we, we could give the restart command a different notion and do the input restart, but then the users would just be uh, confused later on when they shut it down and start it again. Um, yeah, so you are saying it's, I mean, yeah, so the sh I, want, I understand about the shutdown because it, although I, mean, I understand the shutdown part, but I'm, the restart is not. I mean, okay, I guess yeah, it's I mean, uh, there are different types okay. of restarts, and yeah. What I want to say is, even if you would give the restart, let's suppose this is a bug and we want to fix it, then we're not fixing the underlying issue which you were describing. That's all I want to say. So, so let me ask this differently if do you think. Do you think it makes sense in an architectural sense, I guess, that on a restart, we will, as part of the logic of the restart, we'll, we will read the existing Mac and we'll explicitly set it on the new VMI? Does it make sense or is it totally breaking something? So, I mean, if, you, if, you're, if we're talking about masquerade, you could, for instance, just uh, store the MAC address or just generate a MAC address or store the MAC address after the first boot in the VM status and just assign it again when you start it again, for instance, then it's stays consistent. We have a Mac, we have a, a Mac pool um, yeah, controller. Mac pool. It, was, it was just it for was this, the right? Mac pool plugin, which solves the two, yeah. Yeah, so th that, that's the uh, mechanism that we have to provide consistent MAC addresses. But let me just, yeah, and just put pasting it in there. Yeah, I understand what you are saying. I understand what you are saying. I'm just asking. Let's say that came uh, that cool Mac pool is not activated. The user did not specify an explicit MAC address. I'm asking, does it make sense? Is it like, does it make sense in uh, from our architecture that on when you send a command to restart, we will 
we will do the logic behind the thing to, if it's not explicitly set, we will learn it from the previous VMI. Is it, where's does it where's the MAC sense, address come from? Not, uh, where does that MAC address come from that we get? Are we from generating the domain. from the domain. Are we generating a random one? Is that how we got it to begin with? The, yeah. Yeah, the Livius is auto generating it. I would say with masquerade that could it's make from sense. the domain. Uh, that could make sense. Yeah, for masquerade you can really store it in the status of the VM and just always set it again, even between reboots. Yep. So so hey, that, it, and it, that's again we have it. it's not pardon? We have, Pardon? we have, let's say that you have it in the status. I'm, I'm assuming we have it. It's not that I'm. Well, in the VMI status, we have it definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in the VM status, because you, when you, when a VM is shut down, there is no VMI anymore. So there is no place where to keep the MAC address. So you have to keep it in the VM status. Ah, but, but you, but when you, I understand that the list of itself is, it's coming from the sub resource on, on, the virtual API, right? So at that stage, before yeah, we just kill again, the original VMI, the restart we is can not, read it, right? Just again, uh, we can talk about what you expect to happen with restart, like if it's in the pod or if a new pod gets created. But the, the thing is, um, in order to solve this consistently, you would want to keep, especially with Masquerade, where it's easy, you would want to keep the MAC address also between, res uh, between shutdowns and starts because uh, the, the the issue described in on the mailing list will also happen if you shut it down and start it again. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. You mean that if you solve it there, we should also set the MAC address explicitly in the VM. In the VM status, yeah. So what would yeah. happen, uh, the mechanics behind this is the the virtual machine controller would start the VMI and it would watch the VMI as soon as it detects a MAC address. If we didn't explicitly set a MAC address on the VMI spec, we can cache that on the VMI, or excuse me, the VM object in that status. And anytime, therefore, like afterwards, when it starts a new VMI for that VM, uh, we would explicitly set a MAC address that was the first one we detected. Exactly. Um, that would be okay for Masquerade. Okay, so okay, understand. So we we will make sure that once the VMI comes up and the the Mac is seen on the status, we will uh, set it on the VM. Okay, I think I got it. Uh, in theory, Thanks. we can then also talk about uh, we can then also talk about the pod network because with many network CSI network uh, uh, CNI network providers it's okay if we keep the MAC address behind the bridge also. But uh, yeah, that would be another topic then. Where would that cause us trouble? You said for most CNI providers, it would work, but uh, where, where does that fall apart? I don't know yet. I'm just cautious. <laughs> I see. Okay. And for the bridge binding to the pod network, I think that's what you're talking about here. Yeah. Um, we are generating this MAC address ourselves again for that, or are we using the one from the CNI plugin? Oh, we, I guess we use the, uh, from the pod oh. into the um, VMI. Okay. Yeah. That's a little... Mm. Yeah, there it's not so clear if it will continue working. Yeah. I've played with persistent MAC addresses with the bridge bindings with various network providers and haven't seen any issues, but I would not say that it works per se. <laughs> it would work until it doesn't. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I think we can move on to the next topic. Um, so let me share my screen again. Let me see. I hope everyone can see this. Now it's time for a box graph. Okay. Um, I think this is one from Lubo. Um, I'm going to look at this. Okay, this is an announcement, so I think we can skip this. 
this is just for tracking work, I guess, or tracking in the enhancement itself. So let's see what the next one is. Use of multi GPU code. Interesting. So this looks more like a like a support request. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to read this question aloud. So maybe people can chime in who wants to maybe answer that, and I'll then ping people on that issue. So the question is, I deployed Kubert in Kubernetes and each node has eight NVIDIA GPU cards. I use Kubert GPU device plugin to, to use GPU for virtual machines. I want four cards for virtual machines and four cards for other business, non-virtual machine Kubernetes pods. However, if, uh, if Kubert GPU device plugin is used, the Kubernetes pod cannot use GPU cards. I don't know how to allocate multiple GPU cards of a node to the pod scheduling of virtual machines and non-virtual machines. Yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he probably needs to use our device plugin for, for, for GPUs that are intended for, for Qbert and uh, whatever other device plugin for pods. I can comment there. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see this. Oh, it's fine. I'm just going to, uh, uh, I'm just going to, uh, um, to ping you on the issue if you want. So yeah, thank you. So, okay, great. So I guess that this is somehow triage accepted, right? Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Sure. Just to, I always need to look up the labels because I always forget how they are structured. Okay, so let's see, triage accepted. Okay, next one. So make generate error. Okay, interesting. Ah, I think someone already commented on that. I think this was also taken to the mailing list, right? I think Roman, you already um, said something about that. Yeah, there's just the type missing I uh, answered in the mailing list. You can copy yeah. it over if you want. Okay, so yeah, let's see. I'm going to have this still, I think, somewhere. CI outage, where is it? Make generate error. Okay, I'm just um, going to copy this and add this to the mailing list part. Okay. Can I ping you on the issue that just uh, so that we have it for reference? Yep, I'll just copy it here too. Also, okay, great. So I'm not exactly sure what we do with this. What what would be, be the correct state here? Triage, I think, is still accepted somehow or. No, this is not right. It's, it has information, but there's nothing more to do here. So let's see what, he, what do we have as a label still depending. Trash accepted. What should duplicate? Contract additional unresolved. Interesting. I don't know. I think I'm just going to to leave it like that and. I, I, in general, I just want to want to uh, uh, want to have make sure that we don't go over this issue at the next box scrap again. So I would really like to triage all these issues. Okay. So the 
Spawn, das ist mal das mit der Bilder, das ist Goldkato, ich Proxy. I think there is. I think you also created a PR for that. Yeah. 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 Oh, great. Okay, so nothing to do here, right? Okay. So, okay, next one is this one. Yes, I have not initialized the display yet. Okay, this looks like a VGPU issue somehow. So, I think this, I'm not exactly sure, but this looks like some configuration issue with the um, device plugin. Maybe Vladik. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm trying to understand what the problem. Okay. Okay, so so I think it doesn't make sense to go over all this. Maybe you will take a look or uh... yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you. Console connection timeout. Oh, unformatted YAML. That's hard to read. Okay. Darling Gold Handler. Connection timeout. So, maybe some more information would be useful here. Keep cuddle version, good cuddle version. Okay, to launch a container into a uh, cache to device control zero. It's not using a PTI. Pretty weird. That sounds strange. I would say this would need a little bit more information. Correct. Or can you see anything the already? It's using a PTY. I mean, we might even need some some uh, background about what Kubernetes is using or what, what the nodes are and so on. Maybe whether it's even if he's running on the cloud provider somewhere. I also don't mean what this means into launch a container. Right. Uh. Okay, yeah, we so can ask yeah. for for the. I mean, first of all, he's using a very old. Serious disk, I think, but check straight out, yeah. Cube kernel version go 115. Okay, this looks old, right? So, okay. what I would this, I would probably this Intel error occurred dialing word handler. It looks to me like he can't even connect to to word handler, so that's mm -hmm. that's more likely an issue with webhooks or word cuttle or something. Mm -hmm. You can ask if he can check if the VM is running with kubectl get VMIs. Could you, you repeat that again? Sorry. Yeah, I'll just read it. So I will ask him for cube for uh, to check if the VM is running, and then we will we will I will ask to see if we can get information if the webhooks are fine. Okay, so I'm just pinging here on the issue. Hope that's fine for you. Okay. So let's see. Next one. 
That sounds like storage here. Single unattended scenario. This prep, oh, this is Windows, right? Attaching a sysprep disk containing a single unattended XML file results in failure to start the VMI. Okay. Looks like it's using some OKD or something, not completely executable. At least it's using the OC tool. Yeah, Windows, okay. That is completely over my head. So <laughs> if someone could chime in here regarding Windows. Yeah, there we, uh, so there we got a PR also ready for that. So oh, the okay. issue is uh, that, I mean, in general, this sysprep volume source, which we have, would work as a config map as well. So this is just a kind of syntactic sugar around providing these two XML files via a config map. But we, this syntactic sugar is right now ensuring that, that both entries exist in the config map, auto, auto unattended XML and unattended XML. But there are use cases where you wanna, only want to provide one or the other. And that's what we're not allowing, that's all. Okay. So I think this is already handled then. Okay, thank you. So, well, we didn't have that already. So next one is, it cannot migrate VMI. So let's see, just first looking, oh, this time. Oh, this is also kind of enhancement, okay. Migrate VMI, which, which does not use masquerade to connect Port network can migrate VMI. Okay. So, is that a valid enhancement which we want to want to take on, or is that something that would not be possible somehow? Yeah, so this is by design. This is not a bug. This is not possible right now. We cannot take the VM with us. So the VM would use the IP, lose the IP, and then it would lose network con connectivity. Okay. So I'm just going to say this. This is by design. Sorry. We can not. Do it somehow. We cannot do that at the moment. And we're not planning to implement it, right? Should I go there directly or should I just leave it open? Yeah, maybe just also add why. <laughs> just add uh, that VMs can't take their IPs with them because it's delivered by the by CNI. And okay. as a con as a yeah as a consequence, VMs would lose network connectivity after the migration. That therefore we block it intentionally. <laughs> okay. After the migration. So we are blocking it. So we are blocking the migration. I think that is not clear. 
Sound, does that sound good somehow? Or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to close it. Okay, next one is Petter, and that is something that Petter opened. I guess that is some, some kind of back, bug tracker. Yeah, that's from Petter. Okay, it's just about improving the test. To work for more. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Let's just change the test. It's fine. Yeah. We could, we could. No, okay. I think we don't need to do anything about that. Okay. So this is another one, I guess, on working on the matches for from our test code, right? Okay, it looks like. So, okay, next one, not needed for log. Okay. Still with very uh, active opening issues, which is great to see. So that we can track a lot of things that are missing or not correct. Okay, then. This one could we could still take a look at. We're working on GAP enabled window camps. Okay, interesting. Let me see whether there is something. Ah, Victor Tosa, okay. Okay, so Victor is at least um, uh, uh, has had a look at that. So I don't think that we need to address this. This is like a unit test. Okay. So I think we are yeah, 15, 15 days. So we're near probably the end of a meeting, but yeah, let's let's have a, let's have one more and have a look at that. Test on the GPUs to each VMI replicas. Uh, you can make sure each VMI replica has strong graphic processability. Interesting. So this goes out to some kind of yeah. vGPU pinning to a VMI. Um, if it depends on how they are, how they are gr grouped. So if you have I don't know, 50 vGPUs under the same label, you can just assign one. Um, if they have different names, like really different resource names, then it's not possible because you can, then you would have to specify all on the template. So, uh, Radic Red, is you still there? Yeah, but, the, but then in this case, I mean, they could just group them uh, logically, like give them just one resource name. Yeah. Yeah. Radic, do you want to take that and respond or? I think I did. Um, oh, you did? Oh, yeah, Perfect. you did already. Ah. Yeah, great. Okay. Then let's just, that's fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry for the fuss. No worries. Okay, so, okay. Um, I think we have three minutes left. I'm not sure. I, I think I can just uh, don't want to override this meeting. Um, so any final words from anyone? Okay. So yeah, thank you everyone for your attendance and I can give you a couple of minutes back. That is great to see. 
And yeah, I guess that we see us next week. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.